In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a 2D title with graphic design in mind. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and in my recent videos we've been focusing on 2D intros, but in this one I want to focus on 2D titles with uh, some graphic design elements. So that's what we'll be focusing on in this tutorial. So I want to go to a new composition here, it's so already blank. I want to go to layer, new, solid, and we're going to call this one background or just BG and click OK. And then we'll go up to effect, generate, gradient ramp. So the palette of your background is extremely important. You know, as you can see this blue works very nicely and it might take some time to figure out what the best colors are, but we'll go here to the start color and we'll pick, you know, a nice maybe blue color or something like that. You know, you might need to just play around and see what works and then we'll just do like a lighter color for our top color up here. And then we'll go to the end color and we'll do something a bit darker, like the same sort of shade of blue, but a bit darker. So this way we kind of have this nice gradient. And what I'm going to do is set the ramp shape to radial ramp. So now we'll kind of have this nice even fallout. If you see any banding on YouTube, that's just because of the compression. It's all fine on my end, but if you want, if you have any banding though, you can go to the ramp scatter here and kind of just really increase that. So you won't see that banding. Um, and then we'll go up to uh, layer new solid again. And we're going to call this layer vignette. And click OK. And we're going to go to the ellipse tool. Just go ahead and select it and then double click it. And that will create a mask over your layer just like that. And let's go to the mask one, set it to subtract. And let's hit F on our keyboard for feather. And let's just really increase this like crazy. And that should be okay. And then let's hit T on our keyboard for opacity. Let's lower the opacity here. And maybe just hit MM on your keyboard to bring up all the mask properties. And we can go ahead and increase the mask expansion just by a touch. And then of course tweaking the max feather and expansion, you'll kind of be able to control how intense this vignette is going to be. And it'll kind of let you like lean your focus towards the center here and kind of create a nice little edge. I like it. But now let's go ahead and start creating some of those shapes that we saw in our demo comp here. So let's go to the shape tool here up the top. And let's start with the rectangle tool. And you can use any shape that you want. I'm just using some very generic shapes here. So let's come here and let's just draw out a perfect rectangle. If you hold down shift, it'll be a perfect you know square like that. And that's all good. If we go here to the title safes, just click on this crosshair and click on action title safe. Um, we can come here maybe start framing this in a nice little spot. Maybe we'll have the first square here at the top and then we'll just like offset it to So let's click on the fill up here at the top Let's just go to like a nice, you know darker blue and make sure to turn off the stroke by clicking the word stroke and just turn it off and This way we'll have You know a square up there not really that big of a deal, but it's cool So now what we need to do is go into the rectangle property here go to the transform rectangle one add a keyframe for scale Bring that forward in time, maybe by like almost by a second. Set the scale down to 0%. So now we have a square just animating in there. And we'll make both of these keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And now we kind of have a square in here. So make sure contents is selected. Go to add and let's add a repeater. And let's open up repeater one. Let's increase the number of copies. You know, do it maybe 30 or so. But then let's go into the transform repeater one and increase the X position here. So let's go ahead and maybe bring our title saves up one more time. Let's try to have this square to maybe like uh, right there or so. So we'll only go with like say seven or you know six or seven squares all the way across like this. Okay, so let's make sure the contents is selected again and go to add and let's add a group. And let's put the repeater and the rectangle in the same group just like this. And then make sure contents is selected, go to add and let's add a repeater once again. And this time we're gonna go Go ahead and increase the number of copies here, maybe by seven or so. Go to the repeater one transform properties, set the X position down to zero, and then go to the Y position and just really increase that. So maybe we'll just have like, uh, no, maybe down to like right here. And that should be good. So kind of using these crosshairs as like kind of reference. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect, uh, but pretty close is good enough. And I think that's just fine. So now we're looking really good. And let's go up to uh, layer, layer styles, and let's add an inner shadow in here so we can kind of blend this together just a little bit more. Um, let's see, go into the inner shadow down here. I'll zoom in here just by a touch so we can kind of see some of the settings. So I think these are some of the default settings. So we got 75 opacity. Maybe we can change the angle by a touch. You know, that should be interesting. Uh, if you want, maybe, you know, lower the opacity or whatnot. Um, it all kind of depends how intense you want this to be. I'm cool with these settings actually, so I'm gonna kind of just you know zoom out of here. Though maybe I will increase the size to like seven or so, maybe eight, and then maybe set the distance to like seven. Yeah, I think that should be okay for me. 
And now we kind of have this nice array of, you know, rectangles, you know, kind of fading on here. And let's go to, you know, make shape layer one selected, hit P on your keyboard for position, add a keyframe for position, go to the end of your animation. Let's say the end of our animation is like 10 seconds when it doesn't really matter to me. And we'll kind of just exposition this off a little bit, kind of like this. So now we'll kind of have this nice steady animation of these rectangles going by. And we can come here, rename this layer to rectangle. So let's duplicate our rectangles by going up to edit, duplicate. And then let's go to the fill. Let's turn off the fill. And then let's click on the word stroke and set that to solid color. And we'll come here, change the, maybe the color of it. Doesn't really matter to me. And then we'll go into the rectangle fill here, go into the contents um, and go into the group one, go into rectangle one, go into the transform for rectangle one, go to the last, you know, keyframe here and maybe just increase the scale just by a touch. And now you can see we kind of have this nice outline happening for us here. If we want, we can come here, maybe set the stroke size down to three. So now that should be blending there just very nicely like that. So now we kind of have these elements in here and then we can take this even further. Let's take the rectangle fill again, duplicate that, bring it to the top, we'll rename it to circle. And then we can come here and just offset this to like right here. So we can come here and just, you know, maybe delete the rectangle and we're gonna grab the ellipse tool and we'll draw out a perfect circle by holding down shift. And maybe just reverse the solid color on here and turn off the stroke for now. And we can come in here and change this to a lighter color like this. And then of course we can go back into the ellipse one in here, go to the transform, add a keyframe for scale. Maybe we'll make this a touch smaller so it's not as big. And then we'll go to the first frame of our comp here, set it down to zero. Make them both easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And we come here and just kind of position this off very nicely in here. All right. And then of course, make sure the ellipse one is in your group one. So then it'll kind of have that repeater. Make sure it's above the repeater one as well. So this way we can have this nice circle in here. And then we'll come over here, duplicate the circle fill, turn off the fill, and we'll turn on the stroke. I feel like I can make a song out of this. And then I'll paste this right in here. And <laughs> We'll just hit you on our keyboard for scale or just you to bring up the keyframes and we'll just kind of scale this out by a touch the outline stroke and then actually we'll probably go we'll probably just hit you you on our keyboard to bring up all the effective parameters go to the inner shadow and just turn off the inner shadow for the stroke there i don't think we need it and you know what, while i'm at it i'm going to go into the i'm actually going to turn off the inner shadow for the actual uh you know circles like that i don't think we need the inner shadows on that they don't look so nice so let's say if all these shapes are too big for our taste, let's just hit you on our keyboard to bring up all of our effective keyframes. Go to the last keyframe here for the uh, scale position. And we can come in here and just individually scale some of these down. And this will make it a little bit smaller. Maybe also take down the stroke size for each of these. And then just go ahead and continue to make these a touch smaller, just so we can have some more room in here and we're not looking overwhelming. So I made a few tweaks here to kind of perfect the design of this by a touch. So let's add some of these draft shadows that we see in our demo comp here. So make sure rectangle one is selected or just at least one of the layers selected. Go up to effect, blur, and let's add the CC radial fast blur. Let's set the amount up to 100. And let's go to effect, matte, and let's add the matte choker effect. Set the softness here to zero. Set the choke one down to like negative 125-ish. And I'll set the gray softness level down to zero. So then we, we have some craziness going on here. Let's go up to effect, generate, fill. And we'll set this down to black if I can click it <laughs> and here's black and it says the opacity down to like 10% and then our squares are gone. So let's go up to effect uh, channel and let's have the CC composite effect and turn off RGB only. So now we have our squares in there and of course we can go back to the CC radial fast blur and we can always adjust just the center of this. So you kind of change the direction of how you guys, how you want this to you know appear like I'll kind of leave it up in this corner kind of like that. And then let's come here just make sure all four of these effects are selected and copy it and go ahead and just paste these to the other three shape layers as well. So now we have all this going on here. Of course, you might want to go in here and adjust some of the fill opacities by a touch if this is a little bit too intense. So maybe we'll set this down like, maybe we'll set each of these down to 5% for fill because it's a little too much. All right. And then let's go back to our project window here. Let's go to elements. And if, of course, what I can suggest doing, if you have like a nice little texture like this or something, you can always do a quick Google search for one. Um, it's always cool to have something like this because we can come here, drop it into our timeline, and we can set the toggle switches and modes to 
maybe a soft light and that'll kind of make things blend a little bit nicely and we kind of have like a nice texture in there and you know things are looking pretty cool so that looks very nice so this was a nice way to create a nice background and let's go grab the textile tool maybe type out some text here real fast so we'll do like you know sunduck or something um doesn't really matter do some cool titles i'm using the font lotto use whatever you guys want and go to the line tab over here and kind of center this up and what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this layer and we're going to call this one uh placeholder and click okay and we're going to go right into this placeholder here and we're going to start creating you know this sort of design like this so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the rectangle tool and just draw out a nice rectangle like this uh maybe turn off the stroke actually we'll keep the stroke on we'll just go ahead and grab like a pink color or something maybe we'll do a bit orange for this one maybe we'll do like yeah do more of an orange teal look for the tutorial and then we'll come back over here go to line tab and center this up if you don't see the line tab go up to window align and that should be good and let's go to add and let's add a trim paths effect and come over here go to the beginning of the timeline add a keyframe for start bring that keyframe forward in time by almost a second and increase this to 100 percent and of course if you don't like how this comes on just change the offset and obviously you'll be able to choose how this comes on and that looks pretty good and then make both of these keyframes easy easy keyframes by hitting f9 on your keyboard and perfect and then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer maybe just come in here real fast delete the trim paths and go up to the stroke turn it off and go to the fill here and we'll set this to our orange color and then what we'll do is kind of just come here and scrunch make this a little bit smaller i'll come here and call this one stroke stroke outline and then we'll come here and call this one center piece i don't know why i named it like that but i did so we'll come here we'll duplicate the center piece here and we'll open this up go into the contents go ahead and click on the rectangle path right click it convert to bezier path and we can come here click on the word path go ahead and bring up our uh, mask like this and select both these points here at the end and we can start kind of creating this unique sort of like bend here and it's all about perspective right so we're trying to make this look kind of three-dimensional and maybe we can bring it in just a touch like this and then we come here duplicate it go back into the actual path of this one and we're going to go ahead and select these two first points over here and then we'll bring them back like right over here so and then go back to the fill and we'll select our original orange click okay so now we kind of have this and things are looking pretty good and then now we, all we have to do is animate these together so we'll come over here go to the you know first piece here and i should rename them but it's okay go to the path add a keyframe for the path and bring that forward in time by like i don't know maybe 17 frames or so and select the uh first two points over here and bring it in until it actually is you know over the top of the original path so now we'll have this and then make sure you're on the uh, last keyframe here. Go to the next piece here. Go into that path. Add a keyframe for that. Go forward by maybe another 17 frames or whatever you want to do. Grab the last two points here. And we'll bring it in. And that's pretty interesting. And let's grab our actual center piece here. And I'm not going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go. I'm going to grab the pan behind tool. And just put this all the way in this corner right here. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for that, go forward by a second, and break the length for scale, and just put this down, the X scale down here to 0%. And that's just another way of doing things, but, you know, we're just doing it. And then we'll go here back to maybe this first center piece and make the first keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on my keyboard. So this comes on, and I need to go here to the last center point here and just time reverse these keyframes. So boom, that goes on. And then do the same thing here, time reverse keyframes. So now we have this nice piece. What we're gonna do is take the center piece here, duplicate it, bring it on top of our sunduck layer, set the sunduck track mat to alpha mat. And now as this kind of reveals on, we have our text revealing on just like that. And then now we gotta take these two elements and bring them to that side. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and select both these edges here, duplicate them and just bring them to the top. And we can come over here and we kind of have to reanimate kind of how this is going to look. So let's come here and just delete our keyframes and we'll restart our work almost. And I know this sounds a little crazy, but it is kind of a little, it's a little bit quicker to do it this way than any other way. So we'll come over here, go back to the path of our first piece here, uh, bring these keyframes forward in time and, you know, 
bring it back in and we'll just reanimate it in just like this. And of course, what I was just doing, always bring these layers in in time so you don't see the, you know, the actual rectangle just hanging there. But bring that forward. Once that comes on, we'll start growing this one on. So bring that keyframe forward in time and we'll bring these two points over here. And now we got this. So nice. It makes less keyframe an easy, easy keyframe. So now, of course, let's go here, toggle switch to modes, turn on motion blur for all this. And now we have this very nice animation. We go back to our main comp. We'll see that. Boom. You see we have, you know, this animation coming in here. Looks good. Of course, toggle switch to modes and turn on motion blur for pretty much everything. Um, and actually, we could put the vignette on top of everything as well. I think that'll make things. And about the snow particles I'm using here, I already have a tutorial on how to do this. So I'll go ahead and link you guys to that video if you want to learn how to do the snow particles. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And it looks really awesome. I like it a lot. Maybe we made a little bit of a mistake right there, but that can always be quickly fixed. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope... You have a good day.